Assalamualaikum and welcome to Let's Talk with me, Anissa Jaffrey. We are live here on Sky Channel 752 and across Facebook, YouTube, Instagram and Twitter. Wherever you are watching this evening, a very warm welcome to the show. You too can also join in tonight's discussion by simply calling into the studio on 01924 231083. Now calls may vary, so please ensure you have the bill pays permission before doing so. Or why not send in your questions on WhatsApp in confidence? On 078 on 0785835150. So first of all, Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Let's Talk. Now, this evening is a little different as we have a special guest for the evening. Now, not only is she a TV presenter, but is also a Conservative member of the Welsh Parliament for South and East Wales and is the first woman of colour to be elected to the Senate. So please give a warm welcome to Natasha Asker. Assalamu alaikum, Natasha. How are you? Valikum Salam Anissa, thank you so much for having me. It's an absolute pleasure to be on your show no, today. No, thank you so much for joining us this evening. I'm really looking forward to asking you questions and getting to know you a little bit better. But first of all, Natasha, I do want to say a huge congratulations on being the first woman of colour, of being elected to the Senate. Now, <laughs> thank you. that is a massive achievement. How do you feel? Honestly, I feel amazing. I am kind of shocked, stunned, amazed. I'm just blown away with the amount of love and appreciation that I've received from everybody. Yeah, that's amazing. Now, what made you want to start a career in politics? Hello, can you hear me? Okay, I think we have lost Natasha, unfortunately, so bear with us. Um, we are just currently working to get her back. But I will be giving you a few bits and um, bots of background of Natasha. So, Natasha is a Conservative regional member of the Welsh Parliament for South and East Wales, also a Shadow Minister for Transport and Technology, and is the first woman to be elected to the Senate. Now, Natasha was born and raised in Wales, and Natasha has been an incredible popular TV presenter as well, which I look forward to asking her. She has also obtained a distinction when completing her master's from the University of London. She's done all sorts of stuff, interviewed Bollywood singer Rub Gomar Rathod and Sonali Rathod, uh, hosted the premiere for Bollywood actor Rambi Kapoor's new film, Burfi. There's so much. And honestly, I was saying to Natasha before the show, there's you know, Natasha, what is it that you haven't done from publishing her own books to being a presenter, for working in parliament and a radio DJ host? So it's incredible. Um, so please bear with us as we are trying to get back to Natasha. Natasha's also been nominated for the Best TV Presenter at ITV's Asian Media Award for Z Companion and Jukebox Live. Now, that is incredible and what an achievement that Natasha has. I mean, there's so much. Hosted the WTM World Travel Market VIP Dinner, hosted the Catwalk for London's Indian Fashion Week, over two days in Olympia, London. You know, there's so many things that she has hosted and there's so many questions that I do look forward to asking her, especially in 2019 when she did host the British Asian Media Awards. Okay, so it seems as though we have Natasha back. Hello, Natasha. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Technical issues is the joys of live TV. <laughs> it's all right. It's okay. It happens all the time. Um, so, Natasha, I did want to ask, what made you want to start a career in politics? Honestly, Anissa, it was, uh, I love to talk. So when it came to deciding what I wanted to do after my GCSEs and A-levels, I remember my parents sitting me down saying, what do you want to do now? I'm not cut for medicine. I can't stand blood, guts and gore. I'm sorry <laughs> to say that to your viewers at such a time of evening, but it's not really my cup of tea. Yeah, uh, I wasn't either. really feeling accountancy. My father was an accountant by profession and he loved maths and maths was not my forte. So I thought to myself, I want to have a job where I'm able to talk and I'm able to communicate and have a conversation day in, day out. And that's exactly why I got into politics. No, that's great. And, you know, the thing is, Natasha, it's good to work at the best of your capabilities um, to kind of work mm. to your strengths, of course. Um, now, mm. I also want to ask, Natasha, what changes do you hope to bring into Parliament? For example, is there any concerns or issues that you feel must be predominantly addressed? Hello? Okay. 
I think we have lost Natasha again, unfortunately, but we will be back shortly with her. So going back on to Natasha's achievements, um, Natasha is currently working in Parliament. And like I said, she's also a presenter, a radio DJ host and has published two books. One is on the Zen and one is also based on um, arranged marriages. Uh, the book is called Me, Myself and My Arranged Marriage, which was published in 2017. I will be asking Natasha if you're able to also purchase that on Amazon. Does seem like a great book. Um, I did have a look into it um, and taking a look into that and the perspective um, and the illustration of how arranged marriages are perceived. And they are seen in a negative connotation sometimes. Um, some people think arranged marriages um, are kind of related to forced marriages and have that negative impact. However, what it is and what it actually can be are two different things. So I do want to ask Natasha on her perspective on arranged marriages as well. Um, I do want to also ask her a few early celebrities that she may have met along the journey of her TV career which sounds so exciting. Um, also want to know more about, you know, pressure in regards to the career. Um, and it seems as though we have Natasha back. Hello, Natasha. Hello, Anita. I am so apologetic, honestly, about this day. No, but it's, I do apologize no it's absolutely fine. Um, so I was asking Natasha, what changes do you hope to bring into Parliament? Is there any concerns or issues that you feel must be predominantly addressed? Definitely. Anita, it's no secret to anybody that we've uh, unfortunately been suffering the effects of COVID for the past 12, just over 12 months now. And we are ultimately going to come out of it. I'm very much positive that even though there are a variety of variants at the moment circulating across the United Kingdom, we will overcome it. At the end of the day, we do live in Great Britain. Of course. It's, it says it in the name itself. But I do feel that it's most important that we have a recovery plan. We need to not just have a recovery plan for businesses, but we need to have it in place for students as well as the NHS, because of let's course. face it, the NHS has been a great resource to all of us, particularly during COVID. And I think that once we overcome COVID, I think that my biggest concern is the well-being of the frontline workers who we've all been clapping for for the past year, those who've been working tirelessly to make sure that we're all safe and you know taken care of during this awful time and pandemic. But their mental health, their well-being is very, very important because we are going to have a backlog of people who require you know, health uh, appointments and operations. And I don't want their health to be affected in any sort of way, shape or form either. Of course. Um, and COVID has impacted so many of us. Um, and it has been such a challenging year. But going back to, you know, Natasha, you saying you feel positive about lockdown, you know, easing off. I hope it does. I just really need a holiday right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> honestly, now, Natasha, I know your father, Mohammed Asghar, was also the first ethnic minority to be elected to the Senate. Do you feel as though you have followed your father's footsteps? I think a lot of people say that my father was a very passionate politician and he absolutely loved serving his community, his constituency. And I know for a fact that people, especially who lived in the region of Southeast Wales, absolutely adored him. He was really a man who you could consider salt of the earth. And no problem was too big for him. No problem was too small for him. And I certainly hope to continue that legacy on. Oh, that's great. That's fantastic. And like you said, Natasha, like I mentioned earlier, you have to work towards your strengths and what you're comfortable in doing. Um, for example, when I was at you know, uh, university and even college, I made sure that I was picking the subjects that I enjoyed. Like I hated blood and gore and I just, I it was, it was never my forte. Um, whenever there was a spotlight or a camera moment, I was like, this is it, this is me. I want to be on TV. So you've got to work towards your strengths. Now, in terms of pressure, did you feel that at all within your career? Yes, 100%. Course, yes, I'm not going to lie. Very big question, of, of course, yeah. From day one, because I... I actually never started in media. I studied politics at university and then I went off to the city of London to become a banker. And okay. after being a banker for a few years, I decided to get a taste of media. So I worked in radio, which was followed by TV and then TV. I actually dabbled in politics whilst I was working in different places. So I tended to like different things at different times of my life. I think it's all part of the growing up process. Yes. And I would encourage anyone that if you're somebody who enjoys different things, try everything, you know, try a career in media or try something that perhaps not deemed conventional because you know what, you don't want to wake up one day when you're 70 and have regrets thinking, I wish I'd done this. 
of course. And th that's the thing, life's too short, Natasha. You know, you've got to go out there. If there's something that you enjoy, go out there. You know, the world is your oyster. Um, and there's so many opportunities out there to reach. Now, you did mention into the media career, which was the next question I did want to ask. Um, so not only are you a member of parliament, but you've also been a TV presenter. Now, could you talk us through when you went into the TV industry? Yeah, so I actually started really TV world. I went to university in London. I moved from Wales to London when I was 18. And while studying, I know a lot of people get weekend jobs. Yes. So you tend to find people working in various stores. You'll do different sorts of placement. So for me, I actually started working for a TV channel. And I went in as like a researcher and they liked my style or swagger, as they like to call it. <laughs> and from there I started hosting a health, beauty and fashion program every Sunday. So it was for me extra pocket money, but I really enjoyed it. And like you, I love being in front of camera. I thought it was absolutely fantastic. It was so different to what all my friends were doing. So that was my first brush with the media. And then after a year of doing it, I had to say goodbye because then I went off to do a master's. Right, and I think it was okay. really intense, so I couldn't have juggled the responsibility of doing a master's as well as that, even on, even as a weekend job, it was quite draining. So I had to say goodbye to that. Then I obviously went into banking, took a break after four years and thought, you know what, I'd actually really like to go back to the media. So my parents thought I lost my marbles. They thought, you know what, why are you leaving such a stable, good job where you get a pension and, you know, you get a salary every month for something that's really volatile, as they say, because you just don't know with media. You have different perceptions of, of it, I think. Typical Desi parents, mine were great and they're super open-minded, but at the same time, they had that worry that we don't know anything about this sector. No, it's true. It's true. And I think sometimes people think as though with media, it may not be a stable job. Um, exactly. Sometimes, for example, with freelancing as well, um, mm -hmm. whereas, you know, going into banking or going to a secure job, you know that it's a nine to five job and um, you're going to have a salary, you're going to have wages every month. But with the media, you've got to take those risks. You've got to work those extra hours. And that's how you get there. And that's how people like yourself, Natasha, have got into, you know, the media industry and been able to present. And, you know, I've taken a look. I did have a little bit of a snoop on the, your social media and everything. And you've hosted so many, you know, um, events and interviewed and it's fantastic for example you know back in 2019 you also hosted the british asian media awards and um, which mm -hmm. we will go later into that but natasha we will shortly be going into a break so okay. hold on to those questions and answers as we will come back to you very shortly and to the lovely viewers please do stay tuned after the break while we will be talking more with natasha um, on questions in terms of her media and in terms of her publication with the book so stay tuned and see you soon inshallah <laughs> Assalamualaikum and welcome back to the show. Now, before the break, we was discussing with Natasha all about her TV career. Now, Natasha, what advice would you give to those people, you know, to those that are wanting to start a career into TV? I would say aim for the stars and uh -huh. you will eventually get there. I know they always, the saying is aim for the moon, you'll land amongst the stars. Yeah. But honestly, I believe that if you pursue it, you will go through struggles. I'm not going to say to anybody, you can just walk in there and take over the world in a day. It's going to be something that you're going to have to really work hard at. There is going to be a lot of slog behind it because let's be honest, there is a lot of nepotism in various jobs out there. And with media, I was really fortunate uh, that I was able to excel within a few years. But I know there are a lot of people who are still struggling who started when I did. Of course. And it can be really soul destroying. It can really be demotivating for a lot of people. And no one likes rejection, but I'm going to be really honest with you. If you want a career in media, you have to be really thick skin and be prepared for the rejection because it is part and parcel of the job itself. It's not something that unless you're an Instagrammer who makes it overnight, you know, and there are one or two out there who do it and good luck and power to you. Yeah. But if you're, the, if you're a part of the rest of humanity, like perhaps I am, yeah. <laughs> that it is something that you have to really work hard at, take all the feedback that you get. And be prepared to put in the work experience. I cannot emphasize enough how much free work experience I actually did in my run up to doing what I did in the end. I mean, I was fortunate enough to have a chat show for four years, which was fantastic. And I absolutely loved it. But I think everyone needs to understand that I didn't just wake up one morning and get put in the chair. I actually worked really, really hard to get there. Of course, absolutely. And a lot of people don't realize, Natasha, that 
in order to go into TV, there is going to be a lot of unpaid work. There is going to be the hours of getting up early in the morning. I remember when I was doing my degree and there was times when I'd be going to, you know, news channels and, you know, news outlets. And I was just waking up at the crazy hours in the morning just to, you know, go there all day and then go and do my full time job after. And it was really hard. But the thing is, what, like you said, and I completely agree with is, the world is your oyster and if you are very you know if you're very courageous about it you have to understand that you will be said no and you will be told no and you also there'll be times when you think you've sent an amazing application and you'll be turned down and out of the 100 applicants or out of the 100 applications that you send out one will reach out you know of course and the most important thing is that if you're passionate about it then it won't feel like work that's what I felt about it. I loved it so much that it didn't feel like actual work to me. It felt like I was just waking up and going to see friends every day. It was fantastic whilst I was doing it. But equally, those late nights and early mornings that you mentioned, those are part and parcel of it. So if anyone does want a career in the media, I would highly recommend it. Uh, many people might object and say it's not the most family friendly of jobs. In certain instances, yes, it's not. But at the same time, the satisfaction that you get from doing it, it's like nothing else. But it's, you know, the thing is with, with TV, with the media industry, it's not repetitive. You know, every day is a new day. Every day there's a story. You know, every minute of the day there's a new story that's going on. And it's just so exciting. And such, you know, you have this adrenaline feeling of there's a new story out there. I want to be the first to record it. You know, I want to be the first to edit and produce it. So it, it, it is great. And if that is something that you enjoy, then it's definitely a sector to go into. And Natasha, you did also mention uh, within work experience, I cannot also, you know, stress that enough and say that work experience experience is so crucial um, wherever wherever you're given opportunity reach for it you know go out there and go for it really um, if the opportunity is given to you there agreed I mean I'm a huge believer that it's very important to develop one's skills whether that's in whatever sector you're interested in even if you have a different job there's nothing stopping you from learning a new skill and it will always benefit you in one in, in your life I mean I'm a huge believer my father had this one saying that he used to repeat to the point where he was blue in the face he always used to say it's very important in life you have a plan A, a plan B, and a plan C. So if one day you lose your dream job, you will always have the skills and the equipment in you to be able to go for the second job, which is plan B. And if that fails, there'll always be a plan C in place for you too. So I cannot reiterate how important it is for everyone to have a plan A, B, and C in life. No, absolutely. Unfortunately, I only had a plan A. <laughs> that was kind of like going into media and I never had anything to fall under. And it was so stressful, Natasha, because my parents would always say to me like, OK, if you don't go into TV, what are you going to do? Like, you need a secure job. And I'm like, no, no, I'm going to be on TV. It's fine. Don't worry about it. I'm going to be famous. <laughs> Oh, you're living the dream, Anissa. You're living the dream. <laughs> um, Natasha, I do also want to ask, now working as a presenter, has this helped your political career in terms of public speaking and engagement? Definitely. Yes, I think it has. I think it's given me the ability to be pretty confident on camera. There are a lot of interviews that come your way when you're in politics. You have to be quite eloquent to speak to I mean, my constituency is 400,000 people. So me addressing a group of farmers one day, addressing, I mean, year five school kids is what I did the other day. And, you know, addressing university students is planned. So you'll be addressing different people from different backgrounds and different walks of life. And I think being in front of camera, having that experience has certainly added to my skill set. I think being able to be comfortable in front of camera, it doesn't phase me. So I don't really tend to get nervous when I'm in front of a camera. So therefore, if you can be comfortable in front of a camera where, you know, millions of people are watching, Speaking in front of 10,000, 20,000, even a few, yeah. 50 people is absolutely fine. But, you know, at the start, when you went into your TV career um, and, you know, like when I first started presenting, I was very nervous. What advice would you give, you know, in order to kind of have a confidence boost and to kind of shake the nerves off? Nerves. I always think nerves are a good thing. I know people are thinking to themselves, no, no, nerves are really bad. Nerves are really bad. But it comes to a point where you become so comfortable within yourself being on screen and you just think to yourself, you're looking... For those people who work in front of camera or are passionate about working, just think to yourself, you're just talking to a little piece of glass. Because when you look at a camera, you may think there's loads of cameras, there's so much equipment around you. But ultimately, you are literally looking down a camera, like literally a lens. And just think to yourself, I'm just talking to a lens. I'm not talking to thousands or hundreds or millions of people. 
And trust me, your nerves will just disappear. It's so true. And I think it's, when you when you think of it in that perspective, like you're literally just looking at a lens. Like for example, me and you, I think of it as we're just having a, a little chit chat, you know, having a catch up. But then I think when you kind of realize the bigger picture that so many people are watching you, it does kind of give you the nerves, but it's also a massive confidence boost. You've got to go through the first round and then, you know, in order for you to kind of break out of that and go into a comfort zone. Um, Natasha, after the break, as we shortly will be going into one, I do want to ask you about your book. Well, there's two books that you've published. One is The Life of Zen and one mm -hmm. is also one on arranged marriages, which is me, myself and my arranged marriage, which I will shortly be asking you this after the break. So to my lovely viewers, if there's any questions, please do contact us on the number below of 0785-835-150 and we will see you after the break. Inshallah. Take care. <laughs> Asalaamu Alaikum and welcome back to the show. So earlier on we were discussing with Natasha about a book that she has published. Now the book is called Me, Myself and My Arranged Marriage. Now Natasha, could you give us a little bit more insight on this book? Sure, of course. So uh, the book is based on a young woman called Nikki who is basically in the hunt for her perfect soulmate. But she's introduced to a variety of different men in, by a variety of different people. So okay. it could be her parents, her colleague, her friend, a matchmaker. And you follow in each chapter a different man she meets. So you have a gold digger in there. You have someone whose father is a complete nightmare. You have someone <laughs> whose mother's a complete nightmare. So you pretty much gauge every element that could potentially go wrong in an arranged marriage in this book. Okay, and now with this book, is it kind of like a true reflection on how society kind of perceive arranged marriages out to be? So I, I actually wrote the book because I think there is a really big misconception about arranged marriage, particularly within British culture. I think when everyone thinks of forced marriage, they immediately assume that a girl or a young man have been dragged off to their mother country and they're being forced to marry someone, have their passports taken away. And don't get me wrong, that does happen. No, that does happen. But at the absolutely. same time, there is actually a really positive element about arranged marriage too, which many people fail to mention and talk about because I think the horror stories are what kind of sell the news stories. And that's a real shame because culturally, I know so many people who've had arranged marriages and they've been a huge success. And I'm so happy for those who have them and they work out. There are some that don't. And there are some that actually do reflect what happens in the news, but not all cases. And this book is very lighthearted. It's a very easy read. Uh, I'm not pitching my book there in any way, shape or form, just to let you know that. But at the same time, it's a great opportunity to, for people to see that it's not all doom and gloom. Of course. And like you said, Natasha, society do have a negative connotation on how arranged marriages are. Um, and I think it's great that people like yourself publish books like this and reach out to so many people like our generation to kind of show people that it's not really as scary as people make it out to be. Arranged marriages is kind of like your parents kind of set someone out for you. You know, they find someone for you if you like it and you make it through the talking stage then, you know, take it further. Uh, some people mistake it for forced marriages, um, but it's good. And like you said, this, you know, there's loads of people that go through arranged marriages. There's people that I know that go through it. It's just, you know, a huge success, but that can be with love marriages. Uh, that could be with anything. Um, now, just to quickly wrap up, Natasha, I do want to ask you one final question. Is there any message you would like to give to our viewers for the evening who may be watching? right now 100 percent. my main viewer my main message sorry to all of your viewers will be that i thank you for watching this interview with myself and anisa it really means a lot that you've taken time out to watch this but more importantly whatever your situation is whatever your personal circumstances one thing i'd urge you all to do is if you dream for something if you aspire to achieve something please keep at it please don't lose hope i mean a lot of people don't know this is my sixth election that i've just won here in Wales. And oh, wow. honestly, I was going to give up many elections ago, but I didn't. And honestly, I look back now and think the struggle was completely worth it. So if there's something you want to achieve, they do keep saying, if there's something you want to achieve, try, try again. Well, I'm a true testament to that. And I know you all can be too. That's great. That's some, that's some great positive feedback and motivation. Natasha, thank you so much for coming on this evening. And inshallah, best of luck for everything for the future. And I hope to purchase your book very shortly on Amazon. If you do like to purchase Natasha's book, it's still on, uh, it is still on Amazon. Um, 
So thank you so much, Natasha, for coming on this evening. And I hope to stay in contact with you very soon, inshallah. And thank you to the lovely viewers. Unfortunately, we are only on for 30 minutes this evening. But stay tuned next week with more topics with myself. Um, if any questions, their numbers are down below from myself and everyone in the studio. Have a lovely evening. Assalamu alaikum.